we're going to set up uh, my second round of my vermicompost bin. Um, uh, we're going to go through and we're going to do a little experiment with this round. We're going to, uh, as much as possible, we're going to run all of our kitchen scraps that we can through a juicer to break them down as much as possible before we put them in the worm bin itself to see if we can speed up the process and see how fast we can turn over uh, and complete this bin. Uh, okay, so the first thing we obviously need is the tub. Um, I'm not going to go over exactly drilling holes and everything like that. If you are first starting out and want the uh, a good instructional video on how to construct your uh, worm composting bin out of a plastic container then uh, just check out this video right there and uh, it does a really good job of explaining um, the holes you need to cut out in the sides, the bottom, the top, the lid. And, um, first up we're just going to take the bin and we are going to line the bottom of it with about I'd say a good inch or two uh, not packed too tight and just to give it a good covering nice light and fluffy you can see like so and then we're going to give it a nice spray of water um, what I've got here to actually use the, the water is just a your typical you know, pump sprayer that you get at your local hardware store. I use mine um, not only for situations like this, but I use it to actually spray on the uh, um, compost tea that I make with the uh, worm castings and compost, which is going to be in a little bit of a later video. So um, just going to get this thing, give it a couple of pumps. We're just going to get it wet. Um, not too wet. From what I've uh, read and, and watched, uh, excuse my dog there shaking, you can hear his collar maybe, but um, you want the consistency of a wrung out sponge. So, not soaking, but you want it damp. So, I'll give it some water here. Flip it around a little bit and get it mixed up. Some more water. We'll do that again. It looks about right. So squirt more. You want to be able to get it, squeeze it, and you want it to be damp, but you don't want any water running out. That might be a little dry, but I'm going to err on the caution of the dry side this time versus too wet. So the next step, uh, we've got some kitchen scraps here. Uh, there's a few things in here that I actually need to take out real quick. I'm going to step off camera, hold on. Alright, I'm back. Um, what I've done is the last time I used my juicer, I did some carrots and some strawberries and uh, an apple or two and made a delicious drink with it. And what I did is I took those, um, the, the pulp that it uh, obviously extracts the juice from and I put it in this and then I mixed some coffee grounds with it and also some eggshells. I don't know if we can see that, sorry I'll get it more on camera here. Some eggshells. I mixed it all together and this has actually been sitting in my garage for about uh, a week. I guess it is a week since last Saturday. There are some potato peels in here too. But um, So it's nice and good and kind of gross. Doesn't really smell at all. So we're just going to take this and add this as a first layer. Just kind of evenly smush it out there. Well, that looks good. Nice and composty already if you will. Uh, and then we're going to add and take another layer of um, the newspaper and the cardboard here. And we just essentially want to cover this up. Not too much, not... 
a whole lot, and then we want to get this layer wet again. So, do another pump or two here. It's kind of a weird noise, but. Let's see if we just kind of toss this around a little bit, see how it looks. Beautiful. A little bit more water. And we should be good to go. So, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take some things that I, I normally wouldn't run through a juicer, but uh, for this experiment I'm going to try it. I've got some corn stalks, we'll see how that goes. Um, and I've got some other things that I'm going to set up. I'm going to set up my juicer, get it all set, and switch camera angles, and we'll be right back with you. Alright, so we've got a bag of kitchen scraps. Uh, some, some, just some corn husks and some uh, radish greens. There's banana peel in here, which we're actually going to try and cut up some. Don't and we might try and get that through the juicer. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the website Will Blend. We might uh, do some fun things. It's pretty inexpensive. Uh, maybe it's a forty-dollar juicer. So. Um, not that I want to be going and ruining forty dollars because it was my lovely girlfriend who gave this for me, uh, to me for uh, Christmas or my birthday, my birthday. Um, uh, so not that I want to go ahead and ruin it, but it might be fun to try and do some things and see how it turns out. So um, I don't know how loud this is going to be, so this might actually get cut out, but. Put 
quick little toss, or like a salad. A salad for worms. So, add the rest of it. A last layer of the cardboard, a newspaper, some more water. we need to actually go through and we need to add a layer of the of compost or dirt to help uh, introduce some of the you know, important bacterial components and fungus. Uh, I don't know if you can see this on camera but these are the worms that I collected out of my first bin, this bin, but uh, this is the best part about gardening and doing this stuff, is you get to play in the dirt. 38 years old and I feel like I'm 8 when I'm playing in the dirt. It's a blast. I love it. Now a lot of people will tell you to uh, set this bin before you introduce the worms and whatnot to it and let it sit for in the garage for a week or two. Um, but what I think I've uh, allowed to skip that step because the um, kitchen scraps have already been sitting and rotting pretty good. So, all right, we're just going to give it a nice quick spritz of water. We are done with getting the uh, first initial setup of the. Uh, vermicompost or worm compost bin. Next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to, there's a lid to it, it has holes, you'll see that in the instructional video again, it'll be here. Um, but, and then uh, some videos will have you actually set this bin inside of another bin raised up so any of the uh, drippings, I guess if you will, uh, run into that bottom one. Um, you know what, for the last probably four months of this, this didn't have uh, another bin. All it was, it was actually just raised up a little bit to help with airflow off the ground. So, so that's done. We're going to set this aside. The last thing I want to do is show you the five gallon bucket of worm castings that I got from this last. This was food scraps, um, newspaper, um, obviously everything. And again, I know I see people do this all the time, but if you smell it, it smells sweet. Um, it smells like good, rich dirt. Um, now that's all I have for now. But uh, my name is Wade Keller and my website is MyRaisedBedGarden.net. I'm a first year gardener and I'm loving every minute of it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And I will be back in a week to follow up on this experiment to see how things are going. Till then, see you later.